Good evening, my name is Bob Johnson. I'm the Interim Public Works Director for the City of Austin, And we're here tonight to talk a little bit about uh, converting our water system from chlorine, chlorine disinfection to chloramine disinfection. For some time, the city has experienced a number of water quality issues. Most of those issues have been related to color in the water. Uh, there have been some uh, calls and complaints about other issues, but that's the prominent issue that we've, we've seen. And when I came on board with the city, the city manager asked me to look into water quality as one of the things that we needed to focus on more than anything else. The quality of our water is the most important thing that we do because everyone person, every person in the city has to use it, has to have water available. And so our effort has gone forward to try to improve the water quality through changing our disinfection from chloramine, uh, chlorine disinfection to chloramines. We've had the support of the city manager throughout this process, and we've had the support of city council throughout this process. So I'm going to go through a presentation that's going to discuss a little bit about Van Alstine's water, and then it's going to discuss what that conversion process is going to entail. With that, we'll go ahead and start the presentation. Uh, the city of Van Alstine has a total of four wells that are active. Those are at uh, commonly known as well sites one, well site two, uh, uh, well site three, well site four, and well site five. Uh, we also have a well site at well six, which is a at the corner of uh, County Line Road and Highway Five or Waco Street. Uh, that well is not active, but that is also where we connect to the Colin Grayson Municipal Alliance water line, which provides water from the North Texas Municipal Water District. Uh, the growth in Van Alstine has created the need for that additional water supply, our wells are just not able to keep up with that growth that we've incurred. This is a map that shows the different sites. Uh, you can see that four of those sites are generally east of Highway 75, and the fifth one is uh, on well site five, which is located west of Highway 75 and north of FM 121. Well site six in the lower right on the screen there is where we connect to the Colin Grayson Municipal Alliance water line. And the city began taking water there in about 2018 because of the growth in the city and we needed that additional water supply. Well water is predominantly been the history of Van Alstine and wells have historically been safe without treatment for decades and centuries. Uh, if you think back even in biblical times people used wells to get water and back then they didn't have treatment processes. And wells have historically been used by individuals at their, at their homes or on their property and once we started taking well water and putting it in a pipe and putting it in a distribution system it was important to provide disinfection to make sure that there were no bacteria or pathogens that would be in that water. When we started using surface water, uh, surface water has in naturally occurring substances such as Cryptosporidium, Giardia, E. coli, and Legionella and these are pathogens that can be dangerous to our health and harmful to our health, to our bodies. If we ask about what is disinfection, it includes two components. One is the initial uh, treatment of the water, the primary disinfection. That is to initially re remove or kill all of the bacteria or pathogens that are potentially hazardous to human health. The secondary disinfection is maintaining that disinfection process throughout the entire distribution system. So that way, whenever every drop of water that goes through the system and comes into your home and comes out of tap, we know is safe if it has a disinfection uh, a quality to it. Uh, some of the types and methods of disinfection that are used, ozone is a relatively new disinfection process. Uh, it is a primary disinfection process used to take water from a surface water supply and run it through what they call an ozone process. Uh, it's a heavily uh, electrical process that uses a lot of electricity to zap the, the pathogens and the bacteria and it, it is a very, very effective primary disinfection. It is the primary disinfection used by the North Texas Municipal Water District. Uh, there are also physical removal methods. Uh, those methods are relatively new in the last 30 or 40 years. They, have, they run the water through ultrafiltration ultra membranes. Those membranes have holes that are so small that the bacteria can't fit through them, and that's the way that it's filtered out. Also, there are microfiltration filters which are more of a round filter where the water is forced through with pressure and forced out through the filter to eliminate the larger molecules such as pathogens. 
the types of methods of disinfection that <clears throat> generally are used more commonly are chlorine. Uh, chlorine is a very, very uh, effective uh, disinfection against bacteria. It works very, very quickly. Uh, it kills everything very quickly. Uh, it also dissipates, though, over time. If you put chlorine water in a bucket, over time that chlorine will dissipate and the water will not have that uh, chloramine, chlorine in it anymore. Chloramines are just as effective against bacteria. They, they're very effective at killing bacteria. Uh, they do have a longer residual life than chlorine. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that they're used in uh, larger systems where the water has to travel through the system for an extended period of time. And that is what's used by the North Texas Municipal Water District to move water from their treatment plant out into the system to their customers, of which we are one. Fluorine was first used in 1908 in New Jersey. Uh, it was used for that first time as a disinfectant. It became very common in the 1930s, and the reason was because water supply needs expanded and surface water became more prevalent. That caused the need for uh, chlorine disinfection that was used back then. In the 1930s, uh, scientists came up with chloramines as a disinfectant. Uh, they researched it and found out that it did work. And it became a lot more popular in the 1970s as these systems grew when population did. Uh, the population explosion that we had in the mid 19th century uh, mid-20th century, I'm sorry, uh, caused a lot of these systems to grow very large. And in today's water supplies and water systems throughout the United States, almost half or 45% of all persons that receive water through a distribution system are receiving it with chloramines. That only represents about 30% of the total systems because the systems that are using it are the larger systems. And the smaller systems are not using it as prevalently. <clears throat> The current disinfection used by Van Alstine encompasses uh, chlorine only. All of our wells have chlorine disinfection located at the well, and that is used both as a primary and the secondary disinfection where that water is pumped into the system. The CGMA water service that comes from North Texas comes to us with a chloramine as a disinfectant, and in the process of trying to make sure that all the water blends well in Van Alstine, we have used chlorine to convert that chloramine disinfectant to a chlorine disinfectant by giving a heavy dose of chlorine so that it will convert it to just a free chlorine just like the wells. <clears throat> there have been a number, as I said earlier, water quality issues in Van Alstine. Most of those issues have been with taste and odor, uh, specifically uh, during the time of year when the lakes turn over. Uh, there have been some taste and odor issues, but the predominant issue has been discoloration of the water that comes from the tap. We've had many complaints during the time the North Texas changes over to a free chlorine burn, which is about once a year. Uh, virtually though, all of the water quality issues that we've experienced have been in the Mantua and the Georgetown subdivisions, which are our newer subdivisions, and they're the closest ones connected to the Collin Grayson Municipal Alliance supply. We believe that the efforts we've undertaken to change chloramines to chlorine have aided in those water colored water issues and water water complaints. <clears throat> we talk about one of the, some of the benefits of converting to a chloramine disinfection process in Van Alstine. Some of those benefits involve uh, converting to where we have one disinfection process in, in the entire system. That way, we're not trying to convert chloramines to chlorine. We're just going to use chloramines throughout the entire system and it will uh, blend better. The other issue is that disinfectant will last longer. As our system grows and the number of customers grow and they grow further and further from the points of our supply and our pump stations, this disinfection with chloramines will last longer and maintain that residual for a longer period of time. It will also result in a reduced production of disinfection byproducts. One of the things that happened uh, in the 70s, they started identifying some of the things in water, and when they found out that if they used chlor chlorine, it created a reaction and created some disinfection byproducts that were considered uh, harmful to health, potentially. Uh, people believe, though, at the end of the day, that chloramine water actually generally tastes better. In taste tests throughout the country, uh, chloramine water has always resulted in a better factor of taste. Some of the concerns related to a chloramine conversion. Uh, chloramine is a weaker 
disinfectant than chlorine. And because of that, we need to make sure that we maintain that residual. But it also uh, can result in taste and odor issues during the conversion process. Uh, the presence of ammonia of any kind in the pipelines, in the water pipelines, can react with the organic materials that are in that pipeline and create a uh, colored water issue. Uh, some of the uh, other concerns about chloramine is that people that are on dialysis uh, and go through a dialysis process cannot use chloraminated water. They must use uh, a pure water supply, a pure water source. Also, people that keep live fish uh, need to be careful and not use chloramine uh, in the tanks where those fish are used because it can be harmful to the fish. We'll talk a little bit about the process to convert to uh, chloramine disinfection for the city of Austin. That process is regulated by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, and they have a specific number of issues that are required. One of those is a written notice to all of our customers, to every water customer that we have, and we have done that. We have passed out a notice to every home. We've posted it on their door. We've also put it in every water bill for every customer that goes out, and I personally have made contact with all of the medical facilities, doctors, and doctor's offices here in Van Alstine to make sure that they're made aware of it. There is exact wording that's required in that notice, and we've used that exact wording just as TCQ requires. It's required to be passed out a minimum of 14 days prior to the change. We passed it out in the month of July and put it in the August water bills, and so we're not anticipating going forward until those, that time has expired. Uh, as I said, we've, we've notified all of the uh, doctors and medical offices here in Van Alstine. We've also notified the news media who produced a, uh, an interview. And we have one other requirement that TCQ has, and that is to provide a written notice to all of our new customers so that when somebody comes into Van Alstine and opens up a new water account, they will be notified that we use chloramines as our disinfection process. Some additional requirements that we have in order to make the conversion to a chloramine disinfection process, we are required to develop a nitrification action plan. That plan has been developed in draft form and it will take about six months of sampling to finalize that uh, nitrification action plan. Uh, in, a, in addition to that, as we make this conversion, we will be doing extensive testing of all the water that goes into the system. We'll test not only at the starting points, but out throughout the system to make sure that the water maintains that residual and is safe. Uh, we also will prepare a notice for all of our new customers so that they're made aware, as I said a moment ago, of the fact that we use chloramine as our disinfection. Uh, at each of the well sites, the city council approved uh, the process to go forward and develop a chloramine, chloramine process at each of the well sites. We've put new facilities at each site and that has been completed or nearly completed. The water from the North Texas Municipal Water District comes from the CGMA line. Uh, we will look forward at going forward, we will utilize that water as it comes with chloramines already in it. That way the chloramine disinfection will continue or remain just as it is. We will add, we have added new facilities at that site to be able to boost that chloramine if it's needed so that the concentrations are correct. Uh, these facilities that still be, are ready now, or just about ready. Uh, the staff, though, in getting prepared to make this changeover, has talked to some of the other cities that have already gone through this process. Specifically, the city of Anna went through this process a number of years ago. They had experienced multiple problems. They had experienced significant issues with what, the, what was perceived as water quality due to color and odor in the water. Uh, they were forced to flush their mains to try to flush that colored water out of the mains for several months. And this took a, a long time. It took a lot of work by their staff. Uh, they have since recovered and they're no longer experiencing those issues based on what they've told me. And we're anticipating that at some point we'll get there too. But we're fully anticipating that we will experience the same issues that Anna did and also the same issues that Howe did. Howe went through this process earlier this year. They experienced similar problems with water quality in water color and taste and odor, and we expect that that's going to happen in the city of Van Austin too. Uh, we're trying to make sure to be as transparent as we can with our customers and let them know 
This is a temporary process. We're going to do everything we can to minimize it, but it is going to occur. As we go through the process, one of the things that we realize the potential issues are that every water, every person who drinks water likes the water they drink. And so anytime you change that, which is what we're going to be doing, people are going to notice that it's different. And it is very common for people to notice the difference in water immediately. Uh, the taste and the smell is going to be different. Uh, it's really going to be different during the conversion process, but even after that it's going to be different. And so the likelihood is we're going to have a significant water quality impact for some time. Uh, we're going to, as I said, our staff will be out. We will be trying to identify all those points where we need to be flushing. We will be flushing on a regular basis. The, uh, the effort will be to try to minimize the extent of the colored water that we, we, ex we uh, receive or that we produce or that we deliver into the system. That's going to help us identify a lot of places where there's a dead end main. Because if we have a water line that just goes down the street and it's not connected to another one, and there's not a lot of water use in that line, that's where the problems are going to occur the most. So we're going to be trying to flush and find the, those dead end mains. As I said earlier, our city crews will be performing testing above and beyond what we normally do just to ensure that the water is safe and that we're doing everything we can. Some of the steps that have already been taken, <clears throat> we have just about finalized uh, the ongoing relationship with TCQ. Uh, that is nearly complete, but is ongoing. Uh, we have completed the facilities. They're being prepared for startup now. Uh, we've communicated with all of our customers, with all of our HOAs, with all of our meetings, uh, our citizens. We've also holding these town hall meetings. There are four town hall meetings a week of August 14th, uh, one each evening with the same presentation so that people can come and listen and ask questions. They can be explained what the chloramination process is, what we're going through, and they're also allowed to ask questions about that process. We've coordinated with the news media to inform them and allow them to go ahead and make a a news item of it uh, to include us and we've uh, had that interview already with the news media. We have prepared the letters and delivered them. We've also notified all the contacts that were required to notify prior to making the change and we will start using or we can are scheduled to start using chloramines two to three weeks after the letters have been passed out and after these meetings. Our current plan is to uh, start implementing the chloramination process in August, on August 28th. However, our system is stressed at the moment, and if, if that stress is gonna cause us not to be able to flush, we will delay that start date until we know that we can deliver water quality and flush as needed. We've also set up an email address that was provided in the notice for citizens to contact the city if they have any questions or concerns or uh, wanna talk about the problems they're having with the water. Uh, that email address will be uh, looked at and reviewed by myself and I'll be able to either send staff out or work with you to the citizens to make sure that we address their issues. We're also going to create <clears throat> and post on the website a frequently asked questions document. It will include a number of questions. I wanted to hold off until after we had the town hall meetings to make sure I included the questions that our citizens have, but we will produce that and post it on the website so that if somebody has a question they have access to go in and ask some of those questions because a lot of the questions are the same. With that, I want to thank you. I want to tell you that with the city, we, in, we are doing everything we can to grow the system to meet the growing needs. We're doing everything we can to continue to provide high quality water to all of our citizens. And as our system grows, that's going to become a bigger challenge. But the council has supported us, the city manager has supported us in moving forward to try to spend whatever funds are needed to keep up with that growth and to continue to providing high quality water. I hope that uh, answers some of your questions. If you have any, you're perfectly willing to call the city. Uh, if you call the general number with the city and ask for Bob Johnson, uh, you can contact me and I'll be glad, happy to talk to you and discuss anything we have with you. Other than that, have a blessed day.